You ever get an itch in your ear? Well, what you need to do is you just need to take a pin and stick it down there and... No? No, no, you're not supposed to do that. Mm -mm. What you're supposed to use is a, a Q-tip. See, you get a Q-tip and then you just go in there and... No, <laughs> you're not supposed to do that either. In fact, uh, they have what's called a Q-tip disease. That's where you actually, actually make infection in your ear. In fact, they say you're not supposed to put anything in your ear that is, that is smaller than your little finger. That's interesting. I wonder, I wonder if the size of your little finger is proportional to the, your ear canal some way. Like, you know, if someone has a real fat little finger, I wonder if they have a big... I'm being silly. <laughs> you know... There was a time, though, when Jesus put his fingers in a man's ear. And that wasn't all he did. He did something that was uh, kind of gross. <laughs> We're going to talk about that today. Okay, let's dig into this. Let's go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, beginning at verse 31. We read, Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and, after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephephra, which is Aramaic, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened. His tongue was released and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. There are several interesting things about this passage of Scripture. First of all, you know, most of Jesus' miracles were done, uh, were done in public with a lot of people around, but not in this case. He took the man aside, it says. He took him aside privately. And then he put his fingers in his ears, and then he spit and touched the man's tongue. <laughs> now, that's strange. Why would Jesus do that? Well, that's a good question. But the answer, at least uh, partially, is that Jesus never did or never does anything without a purpose. Do you understand that? Jesus never did or does anything without a purpose. If he put his, man, his fingers in that man's ears, there was a purpose behind it. If he spit and touched the man's tongue with his spit, then that, there, there was a purpose in that. I, we had an experience a number of years ago when uh, my wife Jan was in the hospital and we had a, a, a minister who was not part of our particular denomination. Um, it's kind of a... I don't know what you might say, a minister that was kind of far out there in some ways. <laughs> he came in to visit, and, and we appreciated that. That was nice. And, and he, he came to the part of, uh, of asking if he could pray, and we said, sure. And he said, well, now in our, in our group, uh, we don't anoint with oil. We anoint with spit. Oh, really? Well, that didn't really set too well. Can you imagine that today with all of the COVID and stuff that, that uh, we have going on? A, a, a minister going into the hospital and, and wanting to anoint someone and using his spit? <laughs> I don't think so. 
But Jesus, Jesus always had a reason for doing what he did. Probably something that was something that was communicating to his disciples or to the man himself. But there was a purpose. And we need to understand that. In our lives, so many times we don't understand what's going on. We, we uh, hurt. And uh, uh, we, we, we are baffled by circumstances that take place. And sometimes we wonder why God doesn't intervene and, and, and so forth. But we need to keep in mind, Jesus is in control. He is Lord of our life. He is the creator of the universe. There is nothing that comes into our life, nothing that comes into our life, that he cannot orchestrate for good. And that's where we need to find ourselves praising God for who he is, no matter what the circumstances. That, after all, is what faith is all about, isn't it? Isn't faith trusting God even when we're facing what looks to be the impossible? Listen, dear ones, today, if you're struggling in your life, and I know I'm talking to, to many who are struggling in your life, look to Jesus and recognize that he does not do anything without a purpose of blessing your life, causing you to, to grow deeper in your faith, to become more of the, the child of God that he wants you to be. And if you begin to thank him and praise him for what he's doing in your life, it may not be something pleasant, but thank him that he is working in your life despite the circumstances. Begin to praise him. Rejoice in him. Thank him for, for who he is and that he loves you. And, and you can say, Lord, I don't understand what's happening to me and it hurts, but, but I worship you, I honor you, I praise you, I give you my heart and life today. And I know that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. And just begin to lift up your heart and your voice to him and in praise and thanksgiving. And you'll be amazed you will be absolutely amazed at how he just very well may have a miracle in store for you. Mm -hmm.